All right, guys, before we get started today, I would like to dedicate this episode to Andrew Parham. Parham something. Uh, yeah, he recently donated to us on Patreon, and uh, we appreciate it very much. Yes. There is an episode coming your way soon. Thank you very much, Andrew. Yes. From Provo, Utah, this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast. With your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiss, this is Ultima Final Fantasy. All right, welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast. I am your host, Caleb. And I am your other host, Joe, having serious audio issues. Yeah, it's been a debacle today, oh, let me tell man. you. Oh, man, I don't understand. I don't understand how I looped this machine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know what I did. It's the same as last week, and yet I'm having all these problems. Yeah, it's uh, and volume. That whatever. was all... Oh, man, that intro is going to sound peaky. It's going to be loud as uh, fuck. All right, well, you know what, guys? Before we get this episode started, we got some reviews to go over. We do have some reviews to go over, thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, all I right, so it. I'm going to hand you the mouse here, Schweiss, so that you can get the UK reviews when you need to, but you got to give me that mouse back when you're done. All righty, so we have two reviews from the US here. The first one is titled The Best Final Fantasy Podcast, five star review from Christilla. She says. I think. I uh, really love listening to you guys. I really liked how you did a little Squall and Renoa voice role playing from the dialect in the game. It's so cute and funny at the same time. I would love it if you could do more role playing dialects from the FF games. But keep up the good work. You guys are doing such an amazing job. I think that's when we did the. Uh, it's one of the Final Fantasy VIII episodes. Yeah. I honestly don't really even remember that uh i know we did no, it no we did it was for like the renoa is ultimacia or the squall is dead yeah yeah it was we one read of the, the two and we read the dialogue yeah i think it was squall is dead actually i think so too the renoa is ultimacia one was like really small the theory at least yeah didn't have as much uh dialogue evidence all, all right, right so we've got another one here from kefka palooza thank you for the uh, five star review. Yes, and also the monies. Uh, he says, "I must for a must. God, a must for any FF fan." Five star review, and he says, "These guys are awesome, and got to have one of my favorite podcasts on iTunes. Not only do they produce content regularly and very frequently, but the content itself is full of cool info, humor, great intro music slash seriously. Oh, music seriously. The song parodies are so damn creative." Kind of amazed me. Thank you. Yeah. Not just for FF fan, but any fans of good RPGs. As they mentioned, they will eventually move on to other games once they're caught up. Best FF podcast, probably the best RPG podcast in general. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a, a yeah. statement right there. Thank you very much. And uh, All right, I think we got one from the UK that's been around for a while, and we just haven't read it yet. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So let's let's click on that UK section there. And the moving on afterwards is going to be a while from now. There's a lot of these. <laughs> All right. Ratings and reviews. There you go. It's a short one. All right. This one is a five-star review titled, huh, by <laughs> Roscoe. It's, uh, oh, for hell's sake, no new reviews. Well, a <laughs> bunch of FF lovers. Good guys, good chuckle, and not to... M not too much fanboyness. And now we get a certain FF Cherry's weird gaforing as well. Yay. That's some commas. Thank well, you for the five star review. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks. A little hard to read. Yeah, a little bit. Our American ways are I appreciate a little different. It. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank it's been a while since we got a UK review, so... Mm -hmm. Thanks for the support. Well, yeah, so guys, remember that uh, if you leave an iTunes review, I know that the outro that we have recorded says we may read your iTunes review. The truth is that we will <laughs> read your iTunes review if oh, you yeah. write a review up. So, you know, just do that. It helps the show, of course, and uh, we appreciate it very much. Yeah. 
We love it. Yeah, we we certainly do. Schweiss is going to move his microphone over so that we can uh, get going here. All right, Schweiss. So, uh, real quick, um, for you guys who don't know already, maybe don't check the forums or anything. We reached our first and second Patreon goals in the last two weeks. Yeah, so quickly, it's awesome. We're at one hundred and one dollars or something like that. Yeah, that's what per, per month mm-hmm. for the podcast, which is fantastic. It won't be too long till we get a new mixer. Yeah, that's for sure. Or at least a well, the mixer will be coming. We might do the audio recorder first, though. We'll decide whatever yeah, we need first. I don't know. One of those two purchases is coming. Um, and, uh, one, one of the goals we changed around our hundred dollar goal used to be like HD video or something like that. Yeah. It was HD video. For and then YouTube. we, we talked about it and it's like, it's kind of a crappy goal for a hundred dollars. We need something with a little bit more substance. Yeah. Um, and though the HD video goal is, is cool and all it's, it's, you know, not too many people even look at the videos per On se. YouTube, and, yeah. and so it's not really for the listeners out there. Um, the, the videos, they don't get much out of it. It's not a, re- yeah, most of our stuff is from an RSS feed. It's mostly downloaded as a MP3 file. Therefore, the video reward is not, yeah, it's not really a reward. It doesn't, it doesn't really mean much. Yeah. So, so we changed our, our thing around before we got the hundred dollars. <laughs> we changed our, our hundred dollar, uh, Patreon goal is to have, Dave Mustaine, he agreed on this. Yes, yes. Dave Mustaine is going to do a cover of Melodies of Life. <laughs> yes. So. From Final Fantasy IX. So that'll be coming in the in the next uh, next few weeks. That's for sure. We're excited. I'm pretty pumped to have him in here again. Oh, yeah. It's it's going to be awesome. I wish we could do it for the Final Fantasy IX episode. He was a little busy during Final Fantasy IX, though. Yeah, he was trying to find some uh Yeah, they're making a new mates. album right now. Oh, nice. Did you know that? I did not. And they're they're crowdfunding the album. Oh, that's right. I remember you telling me that. Yeah, they're crowdfunding the next Megadeth album. It's uh, Megadeth 15. So if you guys are Megadeth fans, they're crowdfunding it. They got a bunch of cool rewards. And, uh, you know, Dave, he, he works so hard. For our podcast, yeah, we might as well give him a little something back. You know? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't see why not. I mean, he's great <laughs> creating great works for us here, really great works. All right, and what I was trying to get to is that our other goal, the seventy-five dollar mark, the phone line goal. Yes, we got it. Nice. We have a phone line for you guys to call. For now, we're gonna do messages, though. Uh, we'll see how we use the phone line in the future. Um, but if you wish to leave us a message. Um, we got a voicemail, a digital voicemail set up through a Skype account for the following phone number. If you want to leave us a question or an introduction or any message whatsoever, as long as it's like within like, uh, I think you got like a minute and a half time frame. Okay. Uh, you call 385-204-3921. That's 385-204-3921. Leave us a message. Leave us a question for the question segment. I mean, we'd like to get another voice in there. That'd be yeah, kind of cool. It would be. Uh, or you can leave us an intro. What I was thinking for intros is be like, uh, I don't know. Hi, my name is Danny, and you're listening to Ultimate Final Fantasy, the Ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. Yeah. And that's all you have to do for an intro. So if you guys want to do that, don't worry. Don't be scared to call the phone number. Just leave a message. Yeah, cool. we'll probably never answer unless we set up something. Oh, I'll, we... n- I'll never answer. <laughs> <laughs> unless, of course, we're doing like a, a video, a, a thing over Skype with one of the listeners or something like that. Then yeah. we obviously will. It's like, yeah. well, just leave a long message. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your reward. I think there's a time limit on the message. I think it's like a minute to a minute and a half. So right. your questions, make sure you keep them short. Um, I suggest writing a script. <laughs> Uh, if, if you have problems like seizing up or something like that, or you can call us multiple times and say, that was the message. Yeah. Don't use the others. Bang, we've had one listener use the message thing and it was for a final fantasy 11 question. So can't use it. yet. We can't use it yet, <laughs> but I, I promise you it, it works and it's going to be awesome. So it's three, eight, five, two, Oh, four, three, nine, two, one. Give Very us a nice. call, leave us a message and, uh, we'll use it on the show. Yeah, yeah, it's an exciting new... So long as it's not like, fuck you guys, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah, I mean, we might at that point, but <laughs> <laughs> who knows? It depends on how extreme it is, I guess. Yeah. 
right. Speaking of Final Fantasy XI, we got another little announcement. What kind of a schedule are we going to be looking at for our playtimes for the next little bit? Well, we've said that we would be on at 9 o'clock every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we've kept to that. Yes. However, we have always been starting earlier than that. Mm-hmm. And so instead of saying that we're going to be on at 9, I think it's best to say that we're on at like 6.30 or 7. What's better for you? Uh, 6.30 would be fine. 6.30? Okay. Because yeah. the earlier it is, the less like stressed I feel through the day about when I have to get on 11. Yeah. Not that I have to get on. It's actually, once you get over the big learning curve, it's not bad. Yeah. It's really not. Uh, and there's a huge learning curve for Final Fantasy XI. Yes, but, there uh, is. It's, uh, you can get over it in like 20 hours. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. It'll take a day. But after that. <laughs> no. So, yeah, we'll be we'll be starting quite a bit earlier, like two, two and a half hours, I'd say. Yeah. And, I mean, we'll still play till around nine or ten our time. but Most of the time. But I'm not going to promise that we're going to be on at nine. Yeah. That's the thing is... Uh, there's some nights where we got other plans, yeah. and it's like we we figured out that 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 schedule was a little bit uh, difficult, and that an earlier time would be better. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see us at about six thirty, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, still. Yes. And Caleb will be on in between those days whenever he wants. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Whenever you see me start streaming on Twitch is when I'm on. So. Yeah. So go to Twitch. It's Ultima Final Fantasy. No spaces. Yep. Just follow us up, and uh, it'll send you a little notification whenever I jump on, start recording. Yeah. And hopefully, I won't get uh, you know channel shut down because I'm listening to music. Yeah. Hopefully, you stop doing that. <sighs> well, you know, if they had interesting music for me to listen to, I wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of odd that Final Fantasy XI actually, I found out, has the biggest soundtrack of any Final Fantasy. It has over like 200 hours worth of tracks or something like that. Really? Yeah. But there's and areas yet, where there's nothing. And yeah, yeah. Almost the like half the game is silent. Yeah. So, and the battle music. Of course, the game is huge, though. That's true. Like they, It's legitimately ginormous. There is a lot more stuff in the... Uh, in the expansions, though, mm. I've noticed. So that's probably a big chunk of the music musical score is for the expansions. Yeah, so. Probably. All right, Schweiss, uh, do we have some news? Um, yeah, we got a lot of news. News, news, news. All right. So there's a whole bunch of news having to do with this new arcade uh, Dissidia Final Fantasy thing that we lo- we didn't see the announcement of, but everybody else did Yeah, <laughs> uh, a few weeks ago. But um, biggest piece of news, it, it seems, well, there's a few pieces of news, but one of the pieces of news is that uh, Ramza from uh, Final, Fantasy Tactic, Final Fantasy Tactics is going to be a playable character in this new arcade uh, Dissidia Final Fantasy game. Nice. Yeah. I wonder if he's going to have a nose in this one. <laughs> Did you ever notice that in Tactics? Did you play Tactics at all? No, I never played Tactics. They don't have noses. Really? Like, yeah, there's no nose on the face. Uh, so it's like Final Fantasy 3? Yeah, right kind of. But like, there's even there's no like side nose either. Like 3 is like the in-between like kind of nose when you're <laughs> looking at a you know, a side. But yeah, there's no noses. I couldn't mm-hmm. figure it out, too. I was playing the game as a kid, and I was like, what is wrong with this? There's something off. And then after like 10 hours, I'm like, they don't have noses. Mm-hmm. I started looking through all my characters. I'm like, none of them. No nose. <laughs> That's so weird. Why would they take the nose away? They're all mouth breathers. I don't know. Maybe they saved like a few cents per nose or something <laughs> on that development. Yeah, that no one could draw a good nose. And you're like, um, we'll okay, just we're just going to be done. No more noses. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. All right. So another piece of news about Dissidia is that the arcade game, of course, is it's actually being developed by Team Ninja who did the Ninja Gaiden games. I feel like we talked about that before. Um, And, uh, yeah, whole big uh, character list. The biggest piece of news, I think, about this Dissidia Final Fantasy, this new Dissidia Final Fantasy game, is that it's being developed on PlayStation 4 hardware for the arcade. Yeah. And they were talking about this now... People have thought this was like a full announcement, but it really wasn't. The game has not been announced for the PS4. It has not. As of when we're recording this, it has not been announced for the PS4. However, there is an arcade version and a PS4 version video out that compares the two. 
like what will be in the arcade and what could be on the PS4. Right. And they said that they would not start developing a PS- PS4 version until a year after the arcade version yeah. comes out. I guess they want to collect feedback or Yeah, see they how probably want to see know. how well it does on the arcade before they <clears throat> decide to make the giant uh gamble. <laughs> yeah. That would be putting that on the PS4. I I don't really actually think it's that much of a gamble. Certainly. Well, I mean, it's got to be a solid fighting game or else you know, I, I don't know how popular it would be because there's already a couple of Dissidias, so. Yeah. But it would be next gen. I mean, it would look really good, I'm sure. So, yeah. so I've gotten we've got messages uh, from people on Twitch talking about it, and it's like it's not really announced yet. It's yeah, it's not quite there. It's just an arcade. There's game a lot of rumors. There's another rumor about Final Fantasy 15 that pisses me the hell off too. Yep, <laughs> there was something from uh, I don't know, I don't even remember who it was. There was a ton of websites quoting this other site. That was other, bullshit. Yeah, it was saying that like May 2016 is the release date. And I'm like, well, it said it said that on the site, and yeah. I checked the site. Nothing on not the on there. Site. I mean, if even with that, I when I searched Final Fantasy 15, it didn't come up with a Square Enix article stating that it was going to be, you know, released. And that one should be the first thing to show up is like, you know, their site, their release date, but nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, why? It's yet another big rumor that's floating around about the release date. Yeah. Of Final I, Fantasy 15. I mean, it's probably going to be around then, but I mean, there's no. I still say March. Statement. I still say March. Yeah. I say we get the. Release date in June at E3, and that in March is when it's going to be released here. Hopefully. It'll probably be released in December in Japan. Okay. Okay, you guys hear me on that? Quoting me on You writing it down? <laughs> I hope so. Because, of course, if I'm wrong, then everybody has a record of it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, you were wrong. They're all record keepers, if you will. <laughs> Yeah. Which, by the way, there's a whole bunch of new stuff they're finding out in Record Keeper, including like events of Cloud's past and stuff like that. Yeah. So, they're adding new content to that yeah. all the time. So that's kind of cool. For those of you who are willing to play a mobile Final Fantasy game, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Final Fantasy characters showing up in another video game series. This one is Puzzles and Dragons, Zidane and Vivi, uh, as well as Cloud and Yuna are showing up in a new Puzzles and Dragons game. So for those who are familiar with the Puzzles and Dragons games, I'm sure you're excited. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what they are. Though, yeah, so. I had to look it up on uh, Wikipedia, what it was, the mm. game series that like brings a whole bunch of stuff in together. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we got, let's see, what's what's the most important here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Listen. All right, Final Fantasy Type Zero HD developer, uh, what's their name? Uh, shoot. Let's see, they they helped get the third birthday, but I clicked away from it and I had it highlighted before. Anyway, the development team behind uh, Type Zero HD's um, re-release. Um, they're helping Square Enix with the development of Final Fantasy 15. Apparently. Yeah, I think we talked about this before. Yeah, I think we did too. So, but that's cool. Hopefully, yeah. they'll actually be able to come out with this freaking game <laughs> because of that. <laughs> A lot of people, I think, are helping with Final Fantasy 15's. Uh, that's part of the reason why I kind of believe they are going to announce something big and at E3 because they said they have they have a big announcement. See, I'm I'm basing it on we talked about this like I don't know how many episodes ago. Yeah, the 13. But we talked about 13's release schedule and mm-hmm. how it was like uh, yeah, I think they announced it in June, came out in December in Japan and then came out in March. Yeah. Well, we got a whole bunch of like Final Fantasy 15 content that's been released recently. The next biggest video game uh, event is E3 in June. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. I think that's when they're going to announce it. I think it's going to be June, December, March. Okay. I really do. I think it's going to echo Final Fantasy XIII's release. Hopefully. Hopefully yeah. it will echo it in sales as well, if not completely destroy it. <laughs> I don't know if it can really destroy it. It can. I think more people had a PS3 by then than people have a PS4 by now. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too, I think actually. so. Uh, okay. So this week, uh, on the 23rd, uh, of uh, of this month, April. <laughs> of April. <laughs> I almost said August. 
<laughs> and I was like, no, that's not, not right. Okay. Uh, this week, uh, Bravely Second uh, was released in Japan. And I assume it was a big hit, but who knows? We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> I know it was a. I know it was a big deal. Uh, the last, uh, the bravely, bravely default was yeah a huge deal. It here. was pretty popular. And um, the series producer already has ideas for a third game. Already has ideas for bravely third. Says it's going to be like seventy hours or something like that. Wow. They're going to fill it with stuff. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Anyway, if you want to learn more information, you can look that up. The biggest piece of Final Fantasy news this week is not that, which I had um, placed. Uh, but I believe the biggest piece of news right now is the Final Fantasy fourteen After Years. Four. The... And 14. <laughs> I know you're used to seeing XIV. I know. But I know. this one. <laughs> okay, this is just IV. Final Fantasy four. The After Years, the remake, the 3D remake that I didn't even know existed until like two days ago. Because uh, I thought this was like a total revamp that they did for the piece. I didn't know that you could get this on the mobile platform. Oh, yeah. I feel like a freaking moron not knowing this information already. But Final Fantasy IV, the After Years, the remake is coming to Steam in May, I believe, for fifteen ninety nine. Oh, nice. That's kind of yeah. a lot for... Oh, it's a full game though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So for those Final Sweet. Fantasy Four fans, uh, should be awesome. But I do believe that's the biggest piece of news this week. We got a couple other little things here. Final Fantasy Thirteen is now available for smartphone streaming in Japan. Yeah. So apparently there's like a, I can't remember exactly what the size was. It was like twenty, twenty megabytes or something, megabits, whatever the tiny one is, worth of download, and then the rest of it you just stream through your mobile device, and that's freaky to me. Like it says the first thirty minutes of Final Fantasy 13 is free and okay. then you have to buy the rest of the game for tw- uh, for what was it 2000 yen? Yeah, something like 20 bucks. Oh, that's that's okay. Yeah. And if you want to play it on your phone, Which I mean, I, a big that's I'm just impressed that a phone can play Final Fantasy 13. What's going to be even more impressive is their uh, data bill, like you were saying earlier. <laughs> yeah, they're streaming the game. I don't think it gets downloaded onto your phone. Not all of it, no. Right, so there's <laughs> that, that bill. <laughs> Hopefully they get unlimited data. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we already talked about this, but Final Fantasy Type Zero has sold a million do- uh, million units oh, in, nice. in the U.S., which I believe we talked about last week. I think so. Yeah, we mentioned it. And uh, well, last week. <laughs> it looks like that's it for news. Which, uh, thank God. Yeah, was, <laughs> there's a really lot of news this week. Good job. Uh, I want to thank Shinru for uh, for giving us most of that news. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Yeah. It helps out. All right. Well, let's move on to our discussion. All right. Let's do it. All right, so today we have a spotlight episode, obviously by the you know, title of the episode. <laughs> Prepared us a little bit about uh, Kazushige Nojima. He's the writer of a lot of Final Fantasies. A yes. lot of big Final Fantasies. Yeah, some of the biggest. Even. Yes. Oh, so big. Yeah, the ultimate Final Fantasies. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, essentially, Nojima you know, obviously is a Japanese video game writer. <laughs> Best known for his work with Square Enix's Final Fantasy series. So he assisted with the writing process for Final Fantasy 7, 8, 10, 10, 2, uh, Advent Children, Crisis Core, and he's currently working on uh, Final Fantasy 15. That's what I read as well. Really? Yeah. So, the return. Well, he's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that later. Uh, he's also the writer of Square Enix's popular Kingdom Hearts series. Now, when we say writer... Do we mean that he made it all up? No, no, no not no. really. Mostly dialogue. Dialogue, yes. That's what I'm pretty sure he so does. So we really get none of his work over here. <laughs> yeah. It's it translated kinda, yeah, for huh? us. <laughs> we get someone else's rendition of his work. But basically, from 
from doing the other episodes on the development of Final Fantasy, when we have our big Final Fantasy review episodes, mm-hmm. I've noticed that uh, usually, like the directors and the producers, they all kind of come up. Someone comes up with something, and yeah. they all sort of build on that. And then it's usually this guy, Kazushige Nojima, yeah. he usually takes it and makes a script out of it. So yeah, he, writes, he makes it all work. Yeah, essentially, it's, what it's usually is. him. Sometimes he's work works with other people but I, I guess we'll find out with your little write up here yeah yeah <laughs> so his first position in the world of Japanese video games was with uh, Data East which is a game developer and publisher in Japan and I actually looked them up a little bit there wasn't a whole lot of info except for the fact that they went bankrupt in 2003 so oh. <laughs> so the security wasn't there decided to move on <laughs> to Square Enix in 1994. Uh, he started working on FF7 after the main character's settings were already written. Right, yeah. Sakaguchi, I believe, and Kitase, yes, had, Kitase. A lot to do with, uh, had a lot to do with the development of Sakaguchi, that game. Sakaguchi, thankfully, didn't do what he wanted initially. Cause, uh, uh, Detective Joe? Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, which is kind of interesting. I mean... That's a weird way to do it. It's like they everyone like comes up with their ideas, like we were talking, their development process. They get like a freaking development moot together where everyone's in a room and they're like, Hey, I want this. No, 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 make them do this. Nice and, little uh, Windows warning that just happened through our yeah, headphones there. Freaking ridiculous. But anyway, uh so and then they're like, All right, well we'll do all of these ideas and then throw it to this guy and like, we'll make this work. <laughs> He's like, Duh. They do the same thing at Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Did you know that? No, I, I didn't. No, they get a whole bunch of creative people in a room. They do like the storyboard kind of thing and they, they all kind of pitch ideas. And then there's like one or two screenwriters that have to take it and put it down into a script. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God. Yeah. And usually they're the, they're the people that they have the worst job in, the, in that development of Disney animation. So. Uh, I would imagine. Yeah, that would be pretty <laughs> tough. They got to take everyone's ideas and make it work on the page. Yeah. All right, so uh, he actually, when he started working on 7, he was already working on another game that Square Enix has. It's called uh, Bahamut Lagoon. It's like a Japanese tactical RPG okay. by Square. I, I've never heard of it. It never came over here, apparently. Okay. I was looking into it, and I was like, man, I, it sounds like something I would know. <laughs> the like, Bahamut Lagoon. Yeah, you know, the Lake of Bahamut. <laughs> it's really like his pissing bowl, his like chamber pot or something. Yeah, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so he was already working with Square when he <laughs> jumped on the FF7 project. So that's kind of cool. He had a little little bit of background. Uh, he was actually the director for that Bahamut Lagoon thing. So Okay. It's kind of interesting. They gave him a, it's kind of a big role, I mean, right off the bat. I don't know how big of a game it was, though, so maybe not. I don't know. But, uh, let's see, he was actually the origins of the death of Aerith in FF7. And he decided this pretty early on that one of the two female leads was to die in the story. And so they just flipped a coin? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in an interview published in the official Japanese FF-10-2 Ultimania guide, uh, confirmed that FF-7 and 10's universes were connected. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that mini-sode we did? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, that was actually his interview. Right. And, I mean, as we said before, uh, he stated that after Shinra quits the Gold Wings, he got enormous financial backing from Rin... And went to the far plane to start extracting the Mako energy used by the Vegna gun. The system would not be implemented in this generation, so far in the future, when space travel was possible, the Shinra company was founded on another planet. And that would be a thousand years, as always, <laughs> in the future. Uh, he then said that, uh, you know, obviously Seven's story would happen after that. Right, so Ten becomes a prequel to Seven because yeah. the screenwriter decided to. Yeah, essentially he decided that, you know... Well, the scenario like, writer, I believe, is what they call him. Yeah, that's his mm-hmm. official term. Mm-hmm. So many so many terms for these things. It's <laughs> like a billion different uh, people. Mm. But then you look at it and really there's like 20. <sighs> In addition to writing FF7, Nojima also wrote Advent Children, as I said earlier. Years later. Yeah, a yeah. while later. And then uh, also those little novellas that we, we watched one of, I believe, the... Uh, we watched the adaptation of, yes. Yeah, the adaptation of, uh, what was it? the oh. Episode Denzel. Yeah, Episode Denzel, that's mm-hmm. what it was called. There's like it? there's like five others or something like that. Yeah, so he wrote all of those too. And Which we still need to get on. We haven't I know. done those yet. <laughs> I know, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, he's essentially written like 
seven, you know, for the most part, it's like he, he continued it. He did the episode Denzel episode, you know, whoever else. So he's he's pretty much done the. He seems like movie. Kitase's right hand man. Yeah, that's what it here. seems like. Yeah, looking at it, looking at his track record of uh, ten, and I think he worked on thirteen, right? We're okay. We're about to go into that. Yeah, but he worked on seven, uh, ten, and eight, and thirteen. Yeah, those are Kitase's stuff. Yes, I mean, yeah. Kitase didn't direct thirteen, but he was like the he produced it, and he was a big part of it. Mm-hmm. So it seems like, yeah, it seems like him and Kitase got a thing. Yeah, they're they're bros. Yeah. <laughs> No, but uh, he also, like we said, he's he's responsible for writing the all the mythology for the Fabula Nova Crystallis, you know, the lore for Final Fantasy thirteen and fifteen. Yeah. Um, and Type Zero. Yeah, and Type Zero. That's true. They all take place with the same lore, but I think in fifteen they said they're they instead of using like the same, they're using different terminology for the same things. Oh, okay. So instead of like Falci, they're gonna be something else. Oh, I don't it's probably something that's going to be really similar to its opposite. It's like a 13. You're like, um, wait, which okay, one? Okay, Falsy or Lassie. I'm not sure which is which. <laughs> I'm still, uh, you know what? I'm thinking right now. I'm not, I'm still not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We can probably pull up a data log and it'll tell us. But, uh, <laughs> oh, man. You probably wrote all those data logs, too. I, oh, or you had an assistant just right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> No, man, that's crazy. So, <laughs> also, he said that in regards to FF10, he's stated this, and I don't know how I feel about this, but if demand is delivered, there could be new developments. He personally would like to see a sequel such as Final Fantasy X-3. Wow. <laughs> how would you feel about that? A sequel to Final Fantasy X-2? Yeah. I have not gotten to the end of X-2. All I know <sighs> is that there shouldn't have been a sequel to ten. Yeah, so I mean that alone makes me worry <laughs> for one for ten two because ten two should never be. I mean, it's I've heard it's a fun game, but there really wasn't a need for a sequel. So I don't know. I, sequels rub me raw sometimes. Like it's like why just let it die, let it let it be, <laughs> you know. But yeah, he said if he would like to see a ten three, which of course he would probably write, mm-hmm. and I would like to get another job. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, so uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, he also he left the company. He left Square Enix in two thousand three. Yeah, to found his. Uh, he's got a freelance writing company called uh, Stella Vista Ltd. And this surprisingly, this came one year before Nobu Uematsu left Square Enix to pursue his own freelance company. So Wait, it was that like, was in two thousand three. Yeah. But Square Enix is still hiring him to do 13. Yeah, he's a freelancer, so they still pay him, but he just doesn't actually work for the company. He's outside. So he's not on their payroll. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, he doesn't work for them, yet he still works for them. (laughs) Like, they're big games he's still part of. So I wonder, I don't know why. Maybe they they got all exclusive on him, and they're like, no, you must do it. And he's working on 15 right now. Yeah, that's what I've, that's what it's. Is he the main scenario writer? Uh, I believe so, yeah. He's got wow. the same position as he has in all the other games okay. for 15. When I took a look so at So everybody it. else has the ideas. Oh, inc- well, he worked on Kingdom Hearts also, so. Yeah. Nomura is probably like, well, I got an idea for this. Could you go write it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then and then Nomura got uh, moved. <laughs> so he's probably doing he's probably doing Kingdom Hearts 3 as well. I haven't actually looked on that. That would be interesting to see, but I, I don't see why not. Hmm. I mean, it probably would be in their best interest to have the same guy doing, you know, the all three stories. So, I mean, can. all these stories that we love, um, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy X, if you like it, Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say all that we love. No. And, the, and the, apparently the background stuff in Final Fantasy XIII, the lore of Final Fantasy XIII is what yeah. he was respons- responsible for. Did he write the script for XIII? Um, I'm not sure. I didn't okay. say anything about the script. All Just right. the lore for the... All right. It's so interesting that it's all the same, obviously very talented man yeah. who can take these ideas and re- and try to make a coherent story out of him. Yeah, and, I can. Uh, I think he does. Usually, does a pretty good job. Of yeah, it. I can only imagine the madness that would be their little <laughs> meeting room when they're coming up with a story. Like, especially now, like I can understand back in the NES days, the Super NES, <laughs> even where it's like you know, it's a. 
semi-complex story. It's only like 40 hours. But now that it's this beefy, you know, giant cock of a story, you got like 40, 50 people in a room like, no, let's do this with this guy. <laughs> and then they have this just giant mass of ideas. And they're like, all right, here you go. Make they, keep, it work. they keep using him. I assume his work is good over there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got some of the best stuff. I mean. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Eris' death was his his whole idea. Yeah. He, he decided that one of the female leads was supposed mm-hmm. to die in the story. So that was pretty interesting. I That's kind of a lot of power for a dude that's normally just handed stuff to make it coherent. Now, I would say that uh, the screenplay for Advent Children complete edition really pisses me off yeah uh, i don't give him too much props for that no but, uh, and not really much for eight either but you know it's kind of his job to make a coherent thing out of yeah i don't know with, ideas. with eight i think that's probably the one where he fell <laughs> a little short because the story in eight Everybody is like fell weird a little bit short in eight yeah yeah, I, I, think they, I think they might have rushed the game a little Just bit. A, I mean, right. people it's... love that game. We talked about this on the review. Yeah. Uh, but I do, <laughs> there's, there's problems with it. Part of me does kind of wonder about that because there is some stuff that feels rushed. Like even the music, like the music is amazing up to that game. And then there's some really good stuff in it, but like it's not, it just feels different. See? Yeah. And it looks different. And people too. will totally disagree with you on that. Yeah, I know. That's okay. <laughs> they don't have to agree to me with me. They just have to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's got some pretty cool stuff. I mean, not as much on this guy as there was for right. There was quite a few interviews, but they're usually game centric. Yeah, they so are not so much about him. No, it's it's mostly about uh, you know stuff like we talked about the his role in Seven, what he decided to do with Aerith, and you know his idea, his what he feels about a ten three. Which not sure I'm with him on that, but I mean as long as it's a you know, a good story and fun gameplay. Honestly, I can't complain too much. Or at least, if it's at least one of those two, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll survive. But <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. You know, that, that Final Fantasy X and Ten Two HD kind of makes you think maybe they're thinking sequel. Yeah, that's maybe. true. That w- That's actually a good Compilation idea, yeah. of Final Fantasy X. Yeah, that's, that's something... You- Good idea you bring right there because they are bringing it to PS4, so they might want new people to be like, "Hey, well, let's try this right. out," and then boom, ten three. Maybe. Oh god. It might be in the secret <laughs> work. I know there's that Final Fantasy ten two point five book? book I have. Yeah. <laughs> Where how how far have you got with the translation? <laughs> Titus is uh, surrounded by darkness. I believe is the first line. Nice. Yeah. That's... That took me like. It took me a little too long to translate. Yeah, there's a lot of kanji. I wish they, I wish they would release everything like that in English. You know, because like we are a huge consumer of Final Fantasy. I mean, yeah, you would think that they would want everything right. that Japan has for us. In the livestream.net, uh, one of our listeners who goes under the avatar named Pixel. Yes. Uh, he or she? I think it's a he. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, at least he put a he in our form. Uh, he. He put links for translated versions of those works, those episode... Um, So-and-so's, yeah. yeah. The FF7 yeah. complete stuff. Right, right. Uh, have not yet found one for that Final Fantasy X-2 book. Hmm. So, that's too bad. Yeah, it is too bad. But it is like a full-size novel. Yeah, that's So I'm true. wondering if there's going to be like a blogger online who's really, really going to go for that. Yeah. Yeah. If you're interested, please do. <laughs> and make sure to send it to us so we can read it. Uh, I would love to read that. Um we got to we got to talk about doing that Final Fantasy 7 uh episode stuff yeah, at some point. We I do. know we were going to in between 9 and 10, but we got other episode ideas. Yeah, there's always <laughs> stuff to talk about with Final Fantasy. <laughs> wow. For now at least. So, uh, I don't know, what do you think about this guy? Snowjuma guy? Uh, I think he's pretty good. I mean, he's obviously good enough that uh, he feels like he could. He still gets work from Square Enix, even though he doesn't even work for the company anymore. They come to him, you know, they contract this this work out as opposed to having him on their payroll. So I mean, he must be pretty damn good considering that. Mm-hmm. And you know, like we mentioned, he's got some great stories. And I with the with the crystal stuff in thirteen, I, I haven't played thirteen for a while. So I'm not I'm not really sure how good all of that is. I don't know. Do you what do you, what do you think about that? Like, oh, I think the 
I remember thinking the mythology was cool with yeah. 13. You could read a lot about it in the data logs. Yeah. Um, certainly the 13 story is bogged down by a lot of stuff, and everybody complains about it, so I'm not going to try to do that today. But, and I don't know if he wrote the script for this. We should probably find out. That would be good, yes. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, it's a cool mythology. They're still they're still building on it. Obviously, it's Type Zero and Fifteen. The mythology is not what made Thirteen uh, dis- a disappointment to many players out there. Right. right. Yeah. So I mean, I, I think he's pretty good. I, I kind of wish we had a ranking for our spotlights too. It's like always the list. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Hironobu number one. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you put E2? Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I I appreciate this this man's contribution to the series. It's certainly, if anything, we wouldn't have Eris' death. <laughs> yeah, there'd be him. sentimental loss. And maybe with some people, of older games. maybe people would want would want to not have that. Maybe yeah, I don't know. I I never really was too bothered by it, but <laughs> oh, a lot of people were apparently. So yeah. I think we got a few. Uh, we got some questions. Yeah, let's answer some questions. So it looks like we 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 picked out the oldest five questions here. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. And uh, this first one is from Schnitzel Time, a samurai with guilt toss on our forum. This is kind of a hard question to fully cover, but hearing the question about ultimate party made me think of this, since they're fairly similar. Basically, most of the jobs are recurring more or less across the series. Um, so which would you say is the best at the job in Final Fantasy? I know I'm going to miss a few jobs, but I'm not exactly sure how to cover 12 or or really 7 and 8 because of the nature of the systems, but uh, here's what I think. Um, so he, he got a list of certain jobs in Final Fantasy and what character would be best at what job. Okay, uh, let's see. He's got Knight slash Warrior. For utility, I would have to say Oron. But Cloud would be first if FF7 was a bit more clear on jobs. Um, Who would you think would be the best fighter? Ooh, I might go with, I might go with Oron. I don't know though; he's awesome. But like the thing is, is if I could just have Waka in every position <laughs> with his attack rails, I'm a mage, yeah. <laughs> like still just <laughs> uses ultimate. I don't know. Uh, as far as that class, I'd probably say Oron though. I really like him. Mm-hmm. But Cloud is a pretty solid warrior too. And, I don't know. What would you what would you put? Bart's was a pretty solid warrior. Okay. In Final Fantasy V. Yeah. Um just the regular fighter class from Final Fantasy One was always way stronger than the other classes. Yeah. <laughs> Sickeningly. <laughs> um so really any of the warriors could definitely work there. I do like the idea of Oron. Uh, I gotta think about that. Maybe uh lightning to sick damage real quick. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right. Oron and Lightning got in a fight. Considering. Well, it's hard to even gauge that. Yeah, it though, is hard the... to gauge the different games and be like, well, he Because technically, not... Oren doesn't have cooldowns. He, uh, it's just whatever his turn is. So you can just keep going and going and going. <laughs> While she's waiting for her active time battle to fill up, he's just. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I mean, what's. Is that your favorite warrior? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, essentially anyone can become so beastly that they will mm-hmm. demolish just about anything. Mm-hmm. So I just picked my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll have to go with <sighs> Joe from Final Fantasy One. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. I made you, you guys remember Joe from Final Fantasy One, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. What did you make me a black mage or something? I made you the thief. Oh, you made me a thief. 
Oh, it's the most worthless party in Final Fantasy. I know. Well, that's why I restarted. We're going to get... Man, no, it's great. It's a great party if you hit, <laughs> if you hit level 25,000. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, everything is then. <laughs> All right. So he's got one white mage. He chose Eco. Uh, he thinks she's really underrated in FF9, and Holy is extremely useful. Okay. Oh, Steiner's a good warrior. Yeah, Steiner's an him. excellent warrior. Yeah. I forgot about him. Yeah. Still wouldn't pick him. <laughs> no, I, I like Orin more. But uh, uh, I, I like Joe. Yeah. <laughs> With uh, White Mage, I'd probably go for... Hmm, I'd probably say Yuna. Yeah, I agree with you on the Yuna thing, but I, I refuse to answer the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With the same uh, thing. I think Dagger was a more useful White Mage in Final Fantasy IX for my party that I had. I was She was more useful for me, too. Yeah. I had her... I, 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 I had so many abilities by the time I got Eco that I was like, I'm not going to use Eco. I have to equip all this old shit. Right. I don't want to do that. Right. Most people say, though, she's great, but... Uh, I'm sure she is. Yeah. I'm sure she is. But, uh... All um, right. Yeah, I'm going to go with... I'll go with Dagger. Okay, perfect. Just to mix it up. That works. Yeah. That works. Summoner. Oh, crap. <laughs> uh, he chose Yuna, obviously. No okay. question. Um, mm. Let's go... Summoner class from tactics, I guess. <laughs> Anyone can summon. I mean, come on. Well, who does the most damage summoning? Probably Yuna, I guess. I don't know. It, it all depends on your stats. Mm. Yeah, Yuna's a good one. I would have Yuna be my white mage and summoner. Mm-hmm. Take two. Of well, there's so stuff. many Final Fantasy games that kind of let you pick, though. So it's hard to like he was saying. It's hard to pick from eight, eight and seven, you know. Yeah, that's true. Cause they're, it's wherever you throw it, you know. But, yeah, Dagger and Yuna, they're the ones who kind of have like the summoner stuff is set to them. Yeah, that's their class through the game. Yeah, I would have to say Yuna. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, he's got one for Monk. What'd uh, you pick? You pick Yuna again? Yeah, I picked Yuna okay. twice. He says the only Monk he can even think of would be Sabin, and he's amazing anyway, so he would say him. Um. Well, I mean, there's uh, how oh, was his name? Jeffrey. What was it? What's that guy's name in two? It was like uh, Gus. No, not Gus. The <laughs> guy who died. Joseph. Dies. Joseph. Yeah, that's what it is. Joseph. Yeah, Joseph was sweet. Joseph. Uh, but he died. He did die. <laughs> I'd probably go with Saban too. Saban sweet. There's oh my gosh. What's the one in four? There's a dude in four. Oh, damn. Yeah, damn, right? This is embarrassing. Yeah. I don't remember. I think it was something with a Y, though. It was something interesting. <laughs> there is him, though. There is him. There's He's a, few, a monk. <laughs> there's a few monks. Uh, I'd go with Saban also. Okay. Yeah. He's pretty awesome, so him and his brother both. So, yeah. That's unanimous. unanimous. Well, you know, yeah. Yeah, I'd go with Saban. All right, so he goes Black Mage next. Ooh, see, now this one. He thinks Hope would fall in as a Black Mage, so either him or Terra, if she counts. She counts as a mage. Yeah. It wasn't just Black Magic that she could do. Certainly, she is a very powerful Black Mage if you give her the Ultima spell. <laughs> yes. My, I and would so go. Is, uh, so is Celis, though. They're both kind of like the the magic Hitters. Yeah, at least they were in my party. Yeah, they were for me too. Um, I would probably go Vivi for Black Mage, just because just I can add. He's, he's pure black. He is the Black Mage. He is, and he can add status effects to my warriors' mm-hmm. attacks. So because the Black Mages from Final Fantasy One suck. Yeah, they like they can do a lot of damage, but you run out of MP, out of MP so fast in Final Fantasy. You got to level them up a lot, right? Which is so time consuming. All right, so there's Vivi, there's Lulu. Mm-hmm. Lulu is pretty awesome, and her limit is sweet. Lulu is pretty awesome. Mm. Lulu. Lulu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go with Lulu. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. The triple cast or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's sweet. <laughs> well, double cast, but. All right. Well, not the double cast, uh, her limit break. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's more like around nine like, cast. 
All right, his next one is Thief. He really liked Locke, but he thinks Zidane was a bit more useful in his game. Yeah, the whole entire game of Final Fantasy IX seemed to be around, like, seemed to be based around stealing with your main character. Yeah. It's kind of odd that Final Fantasy IX, instead of going the warrior route or something similar, like a paladin, <laughs> yeah. uh, that they went with uh, the Thief. They kind of did the same thing for Twelve though, with Vaughn. He was a thief. Was he? Yeah. Okay. He he ends up with like the same strength as Bosch, which is bullshit to me, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah, no. In the beginning, he's uh, he steals stuff, and he like gets in trouble for stealing things. And yeah, yeah. there's Locke, there's Zidane, there's Riku. Yeah, Riku. Yeah, she's pretty good. I would say the Zidane. I I completely agree with him. I think uh, Zidane's probably the best thief in the series I can think of right now. Yeah, I would say Zidane as well. Mm-hmm. Just his game tailors to it plus he's got some good abilities and he's a high damage anyway so okay dragoon okay so there's freya right yeah and then there's kane yeah and then there's sid from ff7 he would technically be a dragoon okay all right so out of those (laughs) i'm gonna go with sid from seven just because of his you're gonna go with sid from seven i'm going with kane kane is pretty awesome too though kane is yeah, he's pretty awesome. And uh, he says, got to go with Freya, although Kane was cooler as a character. I got to go with Kane because he is cooler. As a character? As a character. Ah, Freya is <laughs> pretty cool too, though. Yeah, I like Are Freya. any of the Dragoons not cool? I don't think so. Even the one in 4 was... Uh... See, this is kind of an interesting question because most of the main series of Final Fantasy, the ones that use the job classes more... There seems to be more job class usage with games where you could switch the jobs out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that I would, there's really just a few. That are, Technically, yeah, unless yeah. you decide that someone is a certain job based on their skill sets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So Time Mage. Mm. Uh, this is really its own job exclusively, but the best example I can think of is Titus. Yeah. He kind of starts as a Time Mage. He, right. gets, he does get haste really early. Right. I'd go with the same thing. Yeah, I'd probably Titus. go with Titus because he's got a lot of damage on top of it. Okay, Blue Mage. I think all of these have been almost useless. I agree. But probably <laughs> Quina because his moves weren't restricted to a limit break. That's a good point. With uh, Quistus, hers were all limit breaks, although some of those were disgusting, so there is that. And then there's also anyone from Seven with the uh, enemy skill mm-hmm. or Kimari. Which his late ones become pretty repulsing, but it's the same thing. Yeah, they are limit only breaks. a limit. Yeah, yeah. Quistus. Yeah, <laughs> fire and uh, machine guns were intense. <laughs> 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 that was awesome. That was uh, yeah. I'd agree. I'd agree. Quinna is definitely the winner there. Kimari is pretty close. Yeah, Quist is pretty close. Her limit breaks usually do a lot. They do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I love Quistus though. Yeah. yeah so well, I feel obviously. bad that she's not. Uh, that's okay. She's <laughs> in our hearts, so to speak. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's move on to the next question here. This one oh, is... Another one from Schnitzel Time. Yeah, also from Schnitzel Time. Character to be. If you had to choose to be one character in a Final Fantasy game, which would it be? I initially wanted to say main character, but I realized that many people don't like half of the main characters. So just any character, as long as they're playable. You would have full access to their abilities or capabilities... But whatever their fate is in the game would be your fate as well. So, for example, Batman would probably say Waka because he gets Lulu, whereas Orin is dead <laughs> and is incapable of being near ascending or entering the far plane. If he had to choose a character for him, he would go with either Kane or Titus. He dra- likes the mind control. Yeah. A, uh, a Dragoon would be a really cool class to be, but I wasn't an enormous fan of FF4. Titus may start off annoying, but he really grows as a character. He's awesome at Blitzball, wields some pretty sweet swords, and he gets Yuna for however brief a time that was. And Spira is his favorite FF world. What would you guys say? Villains are also open in case anybody wanted to say Sephiroth. I would have, I would have, but most of the encounters with him in FF7, at least, are actually Genova, not him. So that kind of invalidates it. Yeah, 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 I guess it's true. Mm. It's not really Genova. Character you'd more. want to be? Yeah. With the same, you'd have to have the same storyline and same fate. Yeah. So what character, who, what character's life would you like to live? <laughs> oh, man. There's a lot of characters. 
there is a lot of characters, and I'm trying to think of one that ends really happy. <laughs> uh, it'd be cool to be Bosch, like a grizzled old badass, but eh, his story is kind of boring. Balthier. That would be actually really awesome, huh? Yeah. Because he's got the woman, he's got his ships, he's freaking yeah. smooth. Yep. All I right. would like to be Balthier. <laughs> 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 I was thinking Bart's. Yeah. Happy ending, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you'd have to deal with X death at some point. That'd probably be traumatic. That's true. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Belthier. Go on, okay. Belthier. He's cool. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, hmm. I had somebody. No, I know who it is. I'll go. I'm gonna go Edgar in FF6. Oh, why's that? Because he's awesome. I mean, Saban's cool too. But I've got that chainsaw move. I'm the king. I'm a badass. No one's gonna ever question my reign. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I'm super attractive. I'm a ladies' man. I got it all, yeah. and I got the castle that moves. Why not? <laughs> I don't understand. And how you it live moves. at the end of FF6. That's true. Yeah, I survived. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I live for ever. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's who we would like to be. Nice, I wonder nice. what other people would like to be. Uh, <laughs> Batman says. While I'm a fan of Lulu and her <clears throat> assets, I would probably say Edgar from FF6. Oh, look, Batman mm-hmm. agrees with you. Not only does he have the most advanced kingdom in the world, but he has some kick-ass tools. And he's quite the ladies' man, too. Oh, that's... And then Bandrum said Umaru, hands down. I dream of being a Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. Okay. Okay, we got a question from Batman here. Okay. It's uh, titled Hardest Part of Final Fantasy. Oh, it's oh, you know. super sexy. Now, uh, what is the hardest thing you've done in an FF game that shouldn't have been so hard? This is not necessarily the hardest boss or hardest dungeon or even hardest mini game, Chocobo Races. Instead, this is something that, for whatever reason, you had an extremely difficult time with. Joe having trouble with the lightning dodging on an inadequate TV comes to mind. Uh. The hardest thing I did in an FF game was get stuck in the Tower of Zot on FF4 and found myself underleveled. I had to make use of my limited items in order to level up to beat the Mage's sisters and the Wind Fiend at the top of the tower, not to mention the countless random encounters I went through while trying to get to the save point. Sorry, (laughs) It was harder than taking a selfie with your own butthole. (laughs) Wow. Anyway... God. What FF part was difficult for you guys that really shouldn't have been, and what were the circumstances? Oh, that really shouldn't have been difficult. Yeah, like it should have been an okay part. Right. You were screwed for some reason. Wow. It's Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, yeah. with just the gameplay. Not this playthrough. Oh, yeah, no. Not this playthrough. Uh, every other playthrough, though. Every playthrough that I went through that I decided to level up, not good. And not really use the junction system. The game got hard, and it didn't necessarily have to be hard. No. Yeah, that's a that's a good good answer there. Um, Just the entirety of FF8. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say... Hmm, I'm going to say that tower in 6. The, uh, the wizard's tower thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Without the mog charm, that was insanity. You tried it? Yes. It was wrong. Like, the battles were just hell. You know, like, the <laughs> only magic they were dealing with. They get worse and worse as you go up. Yeah, they get horrible. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to put the charm on and just walk. Yeah, that's how you do it. That one was pretty rough. And then it didn't turn out to be as bad as I thought it would be, but when I got to the... Uh, the floating continent in FF6, I yeah. was having a really, really hard time. Like, I, I did not have that many tents. I was stuck on this damn floating chunk of earth, and I was getting destroyed. And uh, I, I know you guys probably know this already, but 6 kind of keeps your experience when you die. So that kind of gives it a, a path to get out. But I didn't realize that, and I only realized that I had no tents and was in this really difficult area with certain enemies that I just could not touch, basically. Mm-hmm. So some stuff in 6 was probably my worst. <laughs> like it's just It should not have been that bad, but then it was. Wow. Or the moon in 4. <laughs> okay. 
So, we got a question here from Immortal142. So, which character the, from the franchise do you think would kick the asses of all other characters from the franchise? From from the franchise. <laughs> it can be a, a PC playable character, a yeah. villain, a character in the background, a Moogle, a Chocobo, or even an Oclop. What character would kick? We have character battles. It's true. I don't know if it's so appropriate to answer this right now. Yeah. Um, what character would kick the asses of all other characters? Thing is that when you're playing a Final Fantasy game, you start out not as the character that will kick everyone's ass, and then you kick the biggest person's ass in that world. That's true, yeah. And that is always true. So considering just how foul and disgusting X-Death is, I'm going to go with Bart's on this one. And okay. I think he can kick the ass considering he's got the job abilities if anything, and he's a, a strong character anyway, I think he, uh, I think he's, he's going to be the one to kick the ass of everyone else. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would right probably... now we'll see when our character battles are, are done with yeah, slowly. We'll see who the ultimate champion Over the years. <laughs> uh, I kind of feel like either Bart's, like you said, or Waka just because it was horrendously damaging limit break. Mm-hmm. Got to be one of those two, though. Although I think X Death would rock sin in a fight. <laughs> that uh, would be yeah. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a scary fight. I think that would be <laughs> quite frightening. Let's see. Bandrum says Umaro. <laughs> Again. <laughs> uh, Caleb says Quinaquen because he can just eat everything. Not X Death, I promise you. Uh, Light Sage strongest would have to be a player character. Let's see. She says, uh, I once saw a list that rated a boss in Final Fantasy XIV as the toughest boss in all Final Fantasy, so maybe a, the player character in Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, that's a decent answer. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Shinru says, Lightning probably. Batman says, Chupon or Typhon from FF6, depending mm. on which version you play. That's true. Yeah. It is really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so our last question here. From Shinru. Shinru. Who is a Tifa and I have a thing on the forums. Ooh. He says, would you like to join the Genova's Witness? <laughs> Church of the One-Winged Angel of Latter-day Summons. Uh, have you heard of the live stream? We are Genova's Witnesses, spreading the word of Sephiroth. Will you be ready for a reunion? The day when non-believers will be smitten on the great in the great joining with our mother join us and become a clone today and hojo said let it be spliced <laughs> huh the, for, the church follows these several scriptures in short form all follow in the words and teachings of Genova and hojo and their prodigy son sephiroth following clouds is oh accepted but waiting for his demise is much more fun Genova is the true mother of the great sephiroth and not lucrezia even if Lucrezia biologically gave birth to Sephiroth, Genova is mother. Following Yazoo, Laz, and Kadaj do not count since they are loyal followers of Sephiroth as well. They will be considered brothers. Mm, yes. However, Zack is higher up than Yazoo, Laz, and Kadaj because Sephiroth said so. Okay. Please recite Genova's prayer when available to for the pure pleasure scaring those around you. We will not be held responsible for anyone who decides to help people in the live st- into the live stream. <laughs> we do not have the exact date in which Mother will smitten the planet, but we hope she'll talk soon. This is Genova's prayer. Our Mother, who art in a box, Genova be thy name, Sephiroth come, Cloud be undone, on Midgar as it is in Shinra. Give us this day our daily materia and forgive us our status effects as we forgive those whose status we affect. <laughs> Lead us not into Omega Weapon, but deliver us from the Knights of the Round. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In your name we pr- pray. Akasan! I think means mother. Yeah. Wow. This is ridiculous. Yeah, there's some... <laughs> Kind of amusing <laughs> stuff. I don't know, Caleb. Do you want to be a Genova's witness? Not really. I mean, <laughs> it's really weird. No, uh, please leave. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No, not really. I'm wor- I'm busy right now. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll take your pamphlet, but uh, no. <laughs> <sighs> wow. 
Wow. All right, guys. So I think that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, <laughs> could you get us on the forum real quick? Yeah, yeah. Um, make sure you watch us on Twitch as we go through Final Fantasy Eleven. Yeah, you'll be watching my Slowly, stream. So. But surely. And uh, make sure if you got a question... It's just it's just an answering machine, guys. So don't be scared. Yeah. Don't be, don't be scared to call this this number. You can call three eight five two zero four three nine two one to leave us a question or an intro for the show, and we'd uh, we'll put it on the show. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. gonna be really cool. Make sure you rate us and review us. Review us on iTunes, and uh, we have a Facebook page. Join our forum. Ask questions. All that kind of stuff. It's a fun little community. It's growing. Yes. It's a fun, fun little community. Now, we do have a question from us to you. Oh. This is a new segment. It's It hasn't been a segment in the forum, but it will be a segment for the show now. Yes. We just got to get a jingle at some point. Quest, our question from us to you this week. Right now, we're playing Final Fantasy XI. We're having a pretty good time with it. Mm-hmm. Correct? But we're getting through it really, really quickly. Yes. As far as we can tell so far. Uh, the original release of Final Fantasy XI came with um, five ranks for missions. If you, if you don't know what I mean by that, pretend it's like five different sections of story. So five different ranks that you could unlock. And the final fight was in rank five. That was how it was released in Japan, and that's really all the game was, was just those mission quests, plus right. grinding and big areas. Um, and walking, of course. And, and walking. But when it was released here in the United States, it actually came with nine ranks. So nine missions, you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, and those, so the, that's what the U.S. players got with their version. It included the expansion Rise of the Zillard. So we're wondering what we should play to in Final Fantasy XI. Whether or not we should do a review for just Final Fantasy XI and leave it at that and come back later, uh, recognizing that it won't be very long until we're done with Final Fantasy XI. We got, th- what, three little quests to do and then we're done? Pretty much, yeah. It'll and, be uh, very And some short. leveling up. <laughs> yeah, some. Yeah. My ass. Some, some for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got like six levels to go up before I'm level fifty, which is about where you need to be for that for that quest. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, I got like fifteen. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you more do. like twelve. But it's because you're slow. Hey, man, you got like eight more hours than me. <laughs> of course, that was eight hours of figuring things out. Yeah, which you didn't you didn't do. I did. Okay, just not as much. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, uh, our choices kind of are play to the end of 11 and have an episode of just Final Fantasy 11 then move on to Final Fantasy 12. Okay. That's like one option. And I want to know what you guys think. And the other option is to play what the US players had when it came over here. Uh, play to the Rise of the Zillard. The end of the Rise of the Zillard expansion which continues the main story. Right. Right. Instead of spinning off from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we could finish that and then do a review on Final Fantasy 11. Uh, and then, of course, move on to other expansions later. Our third option is to do it all. <laughs> uh, which actually doesn't seem that huge. Of course, every time we play 11, we realize that things take longer than it seems. Yeah. Um, but what we could do is... We have two options having to do with doing everything. We can go two months of Final Fantasy XI... And just do a review of whatever, whatever we, we got done yeah. in those two months, which we still have. If we do that one, we still have six weeks. Um, or we can do uh, a review for each expansion we get through and try to get through all expansions available. And then when Final Fantasy XI is all through, we could probably go back to Final Fantasy XI and finish those last two uh the last two expansions that'll be out because there's a new expansion coming out next month and then there's two more coming out incrementally through the year okay okay and we'd come back to those either during sequels or after we're done with 14 or 15 whatever we decide 
and whenever those things are out. <laughs> um, so one, one choice, just finish up with 11, move on. Second choice, finish up through Rise of the Zillert, and then move on. Third choice is play for two months, do one review episode for what we did, and then move on. <laughs> or the fourth choice, don't move on, get them all done. Um, recognizing that it would probably increase the amount of time that we play 11, it would probably, what, triple it? <laughs> triple mm. the amount of time it would take. Maybe I'm th- I'm thinking it look it looks like it'll be about three or four months to finish eleven completely. Yeah, um, which actually isn't that big of a deal. But if we're doing it that way, we'd have a review episode for each section. So we do a Final Fantasy eleven review as our main review, right? Yeah, and then we'd go through the expansion. Then we'd have a Rise of the Zillard review. It'd probably be they'd probably be shorter reviews. Yeah, there wouldn't be. Uh, but they'd still be big episodes, I think. Rise of the Zillard, and then uh, Wings of the Goddess, uh, Tales of Abyssy, or whatever it's called, Chains of Promethea. And we'd go on from there. There's, uh, I think there's six expansions. Yeah, there's something like that. And they each have their own kind of missions mm-hmm. that you go through. But will be higher level, so you kind of just go through them. So it's a little different that way. So I want to know what you guys want. Do you want us to take the pansy way out and uh, just beat 11 and just... Consider Eleven as a single Final Fantasy game without expansions and just worry about expansions when we go through the sequels, uh, which, of course, we'll do after we're done with the main series of all the games, of all the main series games. Or if you want us to move on from there, please. We have a thread already started in uh, our Final Fantasy forum. Uh, Just let us know what you guys think that we should do. Right? Caleb, yeah. uh, what's your opinion on all this? Um, well, you didn't really have one for me on the the thread. It was either it was like no, three. I have, it was like I didn't three. Have a vote for you. It was like three Joe options. It was like well, I was the one who put it up. Yeah, but the, none of them are ones that I. But want. in the explanation. It, it yeah, I, I know. In the explanation, and it was a thread for people to respond to. All right, I want to do. My stance on it is I want to do as much as I can within the two months. I don't want to spend eternity on Final Fantasy XI. I don't think it's interesting enough for me. But what if we get through, like, Chains of Promathia in that two months, and it's like we got two expansions left? I don't I don't really care. I don't really feel like I'm going to be cheated out of Final Fantasy XI. Okay. And the, one of the big reasons behind that is I know back in the day they used to delete your character after you didn't pay for, like, a month or two. And I really don't want to have to start this fucking game over if I stop playing while we continue the series and then come back to it later to then start at level one with a new character. That would be hell. <laughs> I mean, we'd know how to play it, so it wouldn't be as bad as this time, you know, where we're trying to go through the huge learning curve. But it would just take so much time and like just to get through the main stuff to get to the expansions. So a lot of my stance on it weighs in on the fact whether or not we can keep our character without paying 15 a month for a game that we're not going to play for five, six months, you know, Hmm. it's almost, it would almost be kind of a waste of money. Someone else's idea was to just play it in the background. Yeah. That's something that we could do. I mean, and we'll come out with periodic reviews. Twitch videos maybe once a week. Yeah. That's, that is an idea, but I mean, same thing though. We'd be paying for it for X amount of time. Don't I've been paying for it forever. It's if uh, the thirteen dollars a month it is. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, but it's I don't know. It's just wasteful to me. You were playing paying for ESO for months after you played it. Yeah, that's true. Of course, they made it free. Yeah, they did make it free, <laughs> and my character's still there. So that's great. You know, they don't delete shit like Square. <laughs> They're relentless. But, uh, you know, I I like the game. It's just I don't want to spend a ton of time on 11. And I know there's a lot of expansions, the but expansions honestly... The expansions look so much more interesting than the main story. They are, but the main story is so uninteresting that I'm not as interested to go into the expansions just because there, like, is no story at this point. It's like, you're at war with this and this nation. There's there's conflict. You hate the humanoids. You know, it's like, yeah, I don't know. See, we have two different philosophies here about this, though. Because for me, I want to judge it like the other Final Fantasies. And it, look, it, we could probably beat the rest of it in like a week and a half, maybe two weeks at the most. Yeah. There's three three mission quests left, and we're all going to be at the level 
that we probably need to be on yeah. on Monday. <laughs> After that, you got to do little quests to open up more levels for you, which is stupid. Um, so I kind of want to just look at Final Fantasy XI by itself, and I'm not sure whether to treat them, those expansions, as the expansion of the story, mm-hmm. which would thus make it more important to go to the end the end right or should i see them as side quests in that's, which case optional yeah that's a toughie because what's the what's the philosophy here i don't know we do what we want i end. know we do what we want but i'm <laughs> not we we're both want different things right now yeah you want 11 for the next year and i want it for it's the next not gonna month be and a for half. a year lies it's not gonna be for a year Lies. There might be three we quests it, left, we but treat, they're giant. <laughs> we do we do a review episode for each expansion that we go through. Yeah, we should do that anyway. We should have that as our setup. We're gonna we're gonna go through this. We're gonna at least give it the time frame we stated in the beginning. So whatever we get through, we'll review. Okay. But that is what I see. What you're saying. It's almost unfair to say that you know the story. Well, if we place the story of the expansions in with the story of the game when we're ranking it against the other Final Fantasies, we would have to complete all of the expansions, right? To thus place it correctly, right? Which is sick because they're not all out. Right. And but here's the thing: how we play eleven will be how we play fourteen. Are we mm-hmm. gonna go through Heaven's Word too, or are we not? I don't know. 14. If we don't, if we don't go through the expansions of eleven. I don't see why we would go through the expansion of 14. Maybe we liked 14 more. I don't know. It depends. We don't have to do... Okay, so the real question here for you guys out there. (laughs) Do you consider expansions as side quests or as continuations of a main story? I guess that would be the true question. (laughs) That is the question. So that forum that I had, that that thread on on the forum... It said on the uh, on the subject of Final Fantasy XI, I think is what it's called, on questions from us to you, mm-hmm. answer that question. Yeah, let us know what you think. Because, I mean, I'm kind of up in the air with it. I don't want to spend forever yeah. on it, obviously. But, but we're not taking forever on it. No, we're not now. But you got to realize that the last mission we did was huge. It was we like were a whole under-leveled. day. We were under If we had leveled up before we went into that thing. It would probably have been fine. It yeah. would probably have been so easy. If we were all level 42 like Bandrum was... Yeah, we wouldn't have had to attack anything until like the top four. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe we just need to not be so pushing through. Just actually level up. Ugh. Well, we gotta level. <laughs> well, we all agreed to level up by fifty. Yeah, uh, yeah. By I, Monday. I, yeah. We can do it. It's easy. Like, no, it's it no, is. It's not, it's not hard. It just takes forever. <laughs> I'll I'll probably even be able to level up my subclass to twenty five too. Yeah, mine's well, yeah. already there for my sub. I well, think. there you go. <laughs> yeah, so let us know what you want us to do for 11. I mean, I, I, know. W- I think we're both willing to do either one, right? Yeah. I, I mean, you're, you seem a little hesitant, but... Yeah, I, I'm not going to pay for the game after we're done playing the game. That's the thing. I'm not going to pay for it. So if I have to restart it, I'm not going to do the expansions later. I, mean, I won't do it. I, won't, I will not restart pay, this game. I'll pay for the fucking game for you. Just so we can get to Rhapsody's Havana deal. Ah, dude, it's so... That's supposed to be the end. They they made the announcement and they said, this is the end of the story of Eleven. We should not have to be responsible for them choosing to end a game <laughs> like 14 years after it started. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I, uh, are we going to do a separate review episode for each expansion? I think we should. Okay. Because they, they seem like they have... Okay, so, so re- disregard what I said before. <laughs> uh, not not with the do you believe them as uh, expand or as side quests or or part of the main story that that's that's still a question I, I need you to ask but the other question about whether or not we need to do a separate episode for them we will when we're done with 11 we'll have a review episode when yeah. we're done with what originally came out in Japan we'll have a review episode and that's when we'll judge it against the rest of the series okay okay that would be fair I would say okay because that's the original FF11. That's what the game was. They released it. That was done until they released the expansion. So that works. We're happy with that. Yeah. Okay. And also next week is our state of the podcast. So make sure you guys join us for that. I think. Well, should I say? I think that's about it for the episode. Yeah. Um, support us on Patreon. Yeah, it uh, <laughs> it helps a lot, and we've got some sweet rewards. We do. In the form of covers and whatnot. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy the grind.
grind, guys. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show was produced by Joseph de Gaulier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph de Gaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show and look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast.